this passive investing actually greater a greater threat than Marxism. Here to discuss David Bonson of the Bonson Group, also authored a new book, Full Time Work and the Meaning of a Wife. David, great to have you on the show. Good to be with you. Just in time. Yeah. So David Einhorn he makes he makes headlines. A uh, pretty well known guy. Uh, him and Ackman, they you know they seem to make headlines and. You know, he's saying that the, the market is fundamentally broken uh, by what's happened in passive investing. I think that there's a difference between distortions and the ability to exaggerate a boom and exaggerate a bust than f- broken. OK, saying it's worse than Marxism. I think you're confusing categories. I'm very critical of uh, the passive investing craze in the sense that it builds a self-fulfilling prophecy up and down. Right. And right now, having seven companies hold the whole index up, I'm just telling you, it's not going to end well. And yet, I don't think that that refers to the social fabric of society. I don't think it has to do with the future of the republic. Marxism was a war on an entire idea system. Passive investing, I think, will prove to be a, a fad that went too high and will find its but right how place. how do you unwind something? I mean, isn't it now, I think it's larger yeah. than active. I mean, that's a lot of oh, it is. to unwind. Yeah. Well, how do you unwind it? How did ESG get unwound bad performance really? the next bear market will unwind plenty of passive investing yeah yeah the and hard you, way <laughs> you had 12 years of passive doing so well because it was impossible not to make money the fed had zero rates quantitative easing and so it just sort of bid everything up and i think you go into an environment that's better for active passive so let's say on the downside though that this exaggerated move on the downside yeah. because the way it works is stock goes up these funds have to own the stock when right. they have to buy the stock the stock goes up right it's, it's sort of a, a, a self-fulfilling yeah. on the downside it goes down they sell it goes down more they sell yeah. i mean that could be some sort of a a, a death spiral well, it can't be a death spiral because these are real companies and real cash flows, and there is a but bid. But the, the stocks can be lowered. The stocks the, can the, look. The downside day by day will be worse than the normal movement because right. of technicals, because right. of the mechanics right. of this happening. But it can't be a death spiral because it's not levered. They're not using borrowed no, I mean, money death, to do it. Death, D-E-T, D-E-A-T-H, the right. death spiral. It just, I mean, the, for what the I'm saying is price, it can't go to zero. No, but it could go to like, you know, it could go to something absurd, though. And it, it can, and if it were levered, it would. But the difference here okay. is that it's cash bought. Okay, but yeah. the bottom line, though, is that it's, it's so it's a distortion, it's not the death of, that, of that's capitalism. That's what I think. Yeah. 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 I think because also the guy at the time was the European quant guy, you know, uh, it, you know, socialism rise, and it, still right. prevalence in Europe. I mean, look what's happening in places like Germany. Yeah. We got to talk about your book. We were talking during a break in full, t- full time. Work in a meaning of life. I'm going to buy the book on my way home. Tell the audience about it. Uh, first of all, you're going to get a copy of the book because I have one here for you, my friend. Thank you. De- look, uh, you, you've lived this. I know your life story. You know the dignity of work. I believe as a man of faith, this is God-given. He made us to work. He made us to be active. And that there is a sense in which our self-worth and our identity comes from our work. Now, people could say, oh, it's not my entirety of my life. I go, that's fine. But it's a part of your life. It isn't th- This work-life balance right. stuff bothers me. Right. I'm not trying to balance my work with my life. It's a part of my right. life. And I believe that our, uh, you talk about Europe and the dangers that happened in their society. I fear us taking their view of work far more than I do even their economic policies. And, and to that point, uh, you know, people, uh, the most popular things on, for instance, social media is your work is not your life. You're not who you, mm-hmm. not, you're, you're not your job. And all of this moves us away from that Protestant work ethic. I mean, I don't think people realize how did we get here? That's right. How did America propel itself over all of these established nations that have been around for thousands of years? Yeah to get to the very top so quickly. And to stay there and to go so quickly. And it was a Protestant work ethic. It was a DNA. And it wasn't just the miracle of the late 1700s and the 1800s. It's today. We're still living off that borrowed capital of these forefathers. There was such a significant investment in building a very prosperous country. Right. Now, here's the thing I would say. We still have a very ambitious entrepreneurial culture, but we denigrate those people. We talk down to them, the class warfare, and then we don't just judge those that want to be removed from working. And I think we need to. And I don't mean being a jerk about it. I don't mean being harsh. I'm saying, listen to your friend who wants to sleep on the couch at 31 years old and not go out and get a job. It needs to be said, you need to be contributing to society. It's not for my sake or your sake. It's for their sake. It's better for their soul. Right. Great stuff. Again, full-time work and the meaning of life. David Bonson, thanks a lot. Thanks, Charles. Really appreciate it.